Echando a perder, se aprende. I was that kind of kid, that kind of kid that tried and tried and tried until he got it right. Eventually, I walked back to mom, defeated, crying, tired, done. Mom would just look at me and say, it's okay. Echando a perder, se aprende. Then she would point to our wall, where three pictures hang of my siblings. My sister, myself, and my youngest brother. This last one being visibly the cutest of the three of us. <laughs> my mom then will point at him and repeat, si, sí, echando a perder se aprende. I learned through humor that one must fail in order to succeed. I began learning English when I was 16. By the age of 18, I graduated with a diploma that read in bold letters, intermediate level. My first interactions with people were always very positive, encouraging. I remember this one time, I was with Leah, who is now my wife, and I asked her if she could please turn off the winter. She looked at me, and after some processing time, she did stand up, walked, towards the remote control of the AC, and she turned it off. When she walked back, she had this smile on her face. And I'm like, what, what's going on? What, what is it? What, did I say something wrong? And she's like, no, 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 it, it's, it's fine. But she still had this big smile. And I'm like, no, 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 please tell me. I want to know. Is there something that I... And then she said, well, you see, you meant to say, could you please turn off the AC? But when you said turn off the winter, it's kind of cute, and it also makes sense. You see, this moment taught me that it is very important for us to be there for our ELLs and show them that we are there to listen to what they have to say, rather than how they say it all times. I knew I was an English proficient speaker, right? I knew I was an English proficient speaker when People stopped offering those patronizing compliments of how good my English was. No more compliments. They were gone. Nobody ever said, your English is really good. It was gone. Instead, now, people actually felt they had the right to correct me every time I made a mistake. You see, as a non-native English speaker, I lack the benefit of the doubt, the slip of the tongue. Any or every mistake that I make is an opportunity for people to correct me. And it often started like this. Oh, Carlos, in English, we say. And although I understand that we is a word that invites us all, who are part of that conversation, it very much felt like, to me, there was a wall between us, the non-native English speakers, and those who are native English speakers. This taught me that I have to be mindful when I use and model language to anyone, to my students, to others. Today, as I stand here in front of all of you, with all these experiences to back me up, I'm still terrified. Even though I know that it is through mistakes that we learn, echando a perder se aprende, I'm still terrified of making mistakes. I'm afraid there are people in the audience judging my accent. I am afraid there's somebody somewhere here with a can-do descriptor chart trying to put my name in one of the boxes. <laughs> Especially when I say those words that I still have to think twice before I say them. Because in my head, there's just so many ways to say the same word. And I wonder, I wonder what is it that we are doing to encourage our students to make mistakes? How are we preparing them for these moments? Are we actually encouraging our students to make mistakes? Or are we just turning off their winters? Thank you.